Hello! Okay, so on one hand, I'm really surprised it's taken me this long to make an anti-haul video, but on the other hand, I didn't know how interesting it would be just to anti-haul things that obviously I wouldn't be interested in, or things that really aren't targeted towards me. I've also only recently come into using more advanced editing software that'll actually allow me to show different products on the screen. Uh, before using the current editing software I have, I was using Windows Movie Maker circa 2006, and the functionality on that version of Windows Movie Maker was very limited. But now I have the editing capability to do almost whatever I want, so now I can make anti-haul videos. And lately a bunch of things are preparing to release that actually have really piqued my interest, and honestly it's getting pretty difficult deciding what I should and shouldn't buy, especially because a lot of things I'm interested in are releasing at once, so I thought I'd throw them all into an anti-haul and give kind of a pro and con of each thing and whether or not I should buy it, especially because a few of these are collections. So it's not just a matter of whether I should buy the one thing, it's also a matter of should I buy the whole collection, part of the collection, none of the collection. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about, I'm pretty much just going in order I believe they were announced in, is the Mac X Sims eyeshadow palette. Now this isn't a true collab in the sense that this is a new eyeshadow palette or it's even in new packaging. This is a re-promoted palette that is going to be in a Sims themed like sleeve case so it's not even the actual packaging. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of The Sims. I feel like I talked about The Sims more in the earlier days of my channel than I do now. Mostly because a lot of my Sim playing time has been taken up by Animal Crossing which I will get back to later. But I've been a very big fan of The Sims for a very long time. If you watch my makeup collection series, which I am currently in the process of filming right now, um, you might see this random like Amazon box near uh, my little stack where I store my makeup. And that's all of my Sims expansions. My personal favorite probably has to be my first Sims game, The Sims 3, which yes, I still have on an actual CD. Followed by Oi, every Sims expansion pack. I also have The Sims 4 and a few of their expansion packs. I don't have every expansion pack for The Sims 4. So massive tangent aside, I've been curious to try Max eyeshadows because I never have before, but I don't think this is gonna be it. This is a palette they are re-promoting after discontinuing it about two or three years ago, so it's not certain if this is old product that they're trying to push out, especially because there's been absolutely no change to the actual case itself and the change is all in the outer packaging. And for me personally, as I've gotten more advanced with makeup, I've begun to learn that sort of like light kind of yellowish, whitish shimmers don't really show up on me. So that for those first two shimmers in the palette and then even the one to the farthest left on the bottom row look kind of suspect as to whether or not those kind of shades are going to show up on my eyes. But yeah, I really love The Sims, but like I said, a lot of stuff I'm interested in is coming at the same time, so this is going to definitely have to be a pass. Okay, so next up, the ColourPop Lunar New Year collection. If you do not know, I am Chinese, so Lunar New Year is like a huge thing for me and my family, although obviously we are not getting together to celebrate this year. So in the collection, there are two curated nine pan eyeshadow palettes, uh, one lippy stick kit, a super shock highlighter, a fourth ray beauty vanilla pearl overnight lip mask, and a soul body shimmering dry oil. The two eyeshadow palettes are definitely going to be a pass for me because in both of the palettes there are repeats from the California Love palette which I already own. If there's anything I am going to buy from the collection it's definitely going to be the Lippy Sticks kit and the Super Shock highlighter which luckily comes in a bundle. I love the Lippy Sticks formula. I only have one though in the shade Cami, which is a pinky mauve shade so it'll be very different from the three reds in this bundle. And then the Super Shock Highlighter, while I have tried Super Shock Highlighters before, I've never tried it in the really big packaging, and I am a sucker for swirled highlighters. I believe my other two highlighters that I have from ColourPop are also sort of swirled formulas. So yeah, if I am going to pick up anything, it's probably going to be those. I'm probably not going to get the lip mask or the dry oil. I don't use dry oils for anything. I have very oily skin, 
so putting oil on my body just doesn't sound like a good idea. And then for the lip mask, I don't know how much I've talked about this before on my channel, but I have kind of a policy when it comes to skincare of I don't buy something when I already have like another version of it that I haven't used up yet. Like I only basically buy replacements for skincare. So as a lip treatment, I'm currently going through the Apple Lime version of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It takes me about a year to go through just one of those, and so I will not be in need of a new lip mask anytime soon. So the next item is the Kaleidos X Angelica Eyeshadow Palette. Angelica, or Angie, is also a creator here on YouTube who I have been following since I started wearing makeup. She's actually one of the first beauty creators I ever subscribed to here on YouTube. And she is collaborating with one of her favorite brands, Kaleidos, and they have come out with this eyeshadow palette. Now, here is my dilemma. I recently bought the Angelica bundle from Cleona, and that bundle actually hasn't even arrived yet. And I bought that fairly recently, and by fairly recently, I mean like last month. So do I purchase the new Kaleidos palette and also pile on the Cleona palette? in such like a short period of time. I'm honestly not sure. Let me know what you think. Kaleidos is not a brand I have tried before. I've heard a lot of great things from sort of smaller beauty creators. Do not confuse them with Kaleido, which is a brand sometimes found in Ipsy because I use two quite often. Okay, so this next thing is the thing I am most excited for, but it's also kind of the thing I'm the most torn on. It is the ColourPop Animal Crossing collection. So when I first heard about this collection, I flipped out. It is no secret how big of an Animal Crossing fan I am. I talk about Animal Crossing quite a bit on my NaNoWriMo vlogs. Pretty much all of my music that you hear in my videos is from Animal Crossing. I use um, either the instrumental version of K.K. Bosa from the Animal Crossing movie, or I like to use the title theme from Animal Crossing City Folk, or even like the random daytime tracks from the games that I'll throw in for ambiance. I love this series. And ColourPop has come out with a full collection in collaboration with them, but when they showed the collection, I wasn't overwhelmed, I wasn't underwhelmed, I was whelmed. Because there is definitely still stuff in this collection I want. I want the uh, Neutrals palette with uh, Blathers and Celeste, the Purple palette with the Able Sisters, the Super Shock highlighter, at least one of the blushes, and then maybe one or two of the lip duos. When they first announced this collection, I was so sure. I was like gung-ho, ready to buy the whole thing. I mean, to be fair, I've never bought the full collection of anything before, and I honestly, I thought this was going to be like the first time where I was like, yes, I'm ready to buy the whole collection, but I'm really not. I showed this collection to my sister, who is also a big Animal Crossing player, and she took one look at that pink Isabel palette and was like, that yellow shade is not going to show up on you. <laughs> like I said, through my makeup journey, I found that, yeah, those like yellowy kind of whitish shimmers have a hard time showing up on me. And while my camera, both my old camera and my new camera made me look pretty pale compared to what I actually look in real life, as the sun is starting to go down as I'm filming, you're actually getting more of kind of like the my real color in real life. So yeah, let me know what you think of this collection. Also, I know a lot of people are upset about the pressed glitters in these palettes. I go back and forth with pressed glitters. On some days, I'm like, no, please God, don't touch a pressed glitter. I am very scared for my eyes. And then other days, especially because I'm, I'm kind of a big fan of the Euphoria Glitter Tears look, there are some days where I just throw a caution to the wind, I'm like, glitter in my eye, which I know is not safe and I would not wish an eye injury on my worst enemy. Hello, so I just started editing and I realized I forgot to talk about the Glitterly Obsessed shade in the uh, Animal Crossing ColourPop collection. I mentioned I kind of go back and forth on my policy about pressed glitters, and pressed glitters, you know, like they can have kind of chunky glitter shades in them, but generally they're pretty fine glitters. But if you think the glitter particles in the pressed glitter shades are a lot, then, well, the glitterly obsessed shades scare me. <laughs> I've never owned a glitterly obsessed, like, pot of glitters, 
but I've seen them swatched and they look huge. They look like craft glitter. I know people use them safely on like their nails, but um, if you've heard me talk about uh, painting my nails before, you know I only recently started painting my nails on my own. I've only done it about like three or four times, so I would not say I'm confident enough in my ability to be able to get pressed glitters successfully onto my nails without like making a mess of things. So I am definitely skipping out on the glitterly obsessed uh, pot glitter. I will say though, the packaging is very cute. Okay, so now my final thing, and actually this was announced before the Angelica palette or the Animal Crossing collection, at least before all of the contents of the Animal Crossing collab were revealed. This is Auric Beauty by Sam Ravendahl. Sam Ravendahl is another beauty YouTuber who I've been following since I started wearing makeup. She and I sort of share makeup preferences in that we like kind of a softer, dewier face and with maybe a heavier eye, but not always. But the difference between me and her is that she uses a lot of cream products, whereas I have to be kind of more selective about cream products because I have very oily skin. But she's coming out with her own makeup brand and I'm super happy for her, even if I don't end up buying anything from her collection, which I, I'll get into. She's coming out with luminizers and I have never tried a luminizer. Wanting like dewy, glowy skin, but already having oily, greasy skin is kind of a hard tightrope to walk. You want that luminous look, but you already kind of have a lot of natural shininess to you. So finding products is about like kind of finding a balance between what the look you want versus your own natural oils and like what products are going to push you towards a drier look versus an oily look, but what products are gonna make you too oily. And so because of that, I've always strayed away from trying luminizers because my gut feeling is that it's the kind of product that would make me too greasy looking. <laughs> so the luminizers probably aren't gonna be for me, but she's got eyeshadows, both cream and powder. The price is a little steep for these eyeshadows. They are, Ah, $40 each. Um, if I am going to get them, I'm probably only going to get one. Either Temper or Defiance. One's kind of a champagne gold and the other is a bronze. $40 is a little steep compared to my personal price preference, but I've talked about this in terms of the Cleona shadows, that when it comes to indie brands, I am willing to spend a little bit more compared to mainstream brands. But also with the Cleona shadows, like I said earlier, because I made kind of a big, expensive indie purchase fairly recently, I'm not sure if I want to go in on another big expensive indie purchase so soon. So yeah, that was it. Let me know what you thought about everything I talked about in this video. Are you interested in picking up anything I've talked about? Do you agree with like kind of the purchasing decisions I'm going to be making or kind of the purchasing judgment calls I made on these products? Do you want me to buy anything that I've mentioned? Or do you have like a preference of something you want me to see me review? Let me know. To wrap this up, I am going definitely with the lippy sticks kit and the highlighter from the Lunar New Year collection from ColourPop and two of the eyeshadow quads, at least one blush and at least one lip duo from the Animal Crossing collection. Oh, and probably the Super Shock a shadow as well. And then in the maybe section, Kaleidos Angelica and Auric Beauty by Sam Ravendahl. So thank you so much for watching and until then, I will see you next time.